Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel today. I wanted to talk about why going vegan or eating even just more plant-based is better for the environment. So before we start out, if you'd like to hear about my complete vegan journey, my vegan story, you can watch that up here. I just wanna point out that I went vegan for the earth because of all the great benefits of eating plant-based and environmentalism. They go hand in hand. And we're gonna jump into all those reasons in this video. I also have another great resource, 30 reasons to go vegan that aren't for the animals because I know a lot of people are like, you only care about the animals if you're vegan. Like, no, there's a whole lot of other things that people care about when they go vegan, I feel like. Like your health and the environment and of course the animals too. Another thing as well, I am also in the middle of a biodiversity series and the standard American diet plainly is kind of killing biodiversity and we're going to be covering that more next week. So if you're interested in that video, stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell for post notifications if you don't wanna miss that video and you don't wanna miss how plant-based eating ties right into biodiversity. The last point I wanna make that I'm not trying to convince anybody to go vegan, especially overnight. I know that's very tricky. I tried that. But what I'm trying to do here is just educate everybody on eating more plants and eating less animals is so much better for the environment. Over consuming meat is just as detrimental to the planet as over consuming plastic or over consuming oil or over consuming coal. Basically over consumption is never good and that's the mo main point of this video. Over consuming meat is leading to a lot of issues and we're really seeing that with the standard American diet. So basically if we can take us if everybody can take a step even if it's just a small step back from eating meat, it can be a real benefit. Again, not saying that everyone needs to go vegan, it would be great, but if we can all just switch to one plant-based meal a day, one plant-based meal a week even, that really is a big benefit. So like I said, I went vegan for the planet, and when I heard an influencer here, an influencer there saying that going vegan was better for the earth, I thought it was mumbo jumbo. I thought it was a load of garbage. I'm like, why? Why is eating a plant-based burger gonna save the earth instead of eating a beef burger or eating a chicken breast? I think it was just denial at first because I was a big meat eater up until just three years ago. And I think a lot of it was ignorance too. I was just not aware of the facts. So I did a lot of research for myself. Take everything I say with a grain of salt, do your own research before you make your final decision. And I'll leave all my resources linked down below so you can do your own research after this. And again, you don't have to go vegan overnight. You don't have to quit cold turkey, pun heavily intended. Just take baby steps. Baby steps really do make a big difference. If you've caught any of my outro quotes, your small changes do have a big impact in the long run. So first, let's talk about growing food. A common argument against veganism is that we won't have enough food. And actually, we already do have enough food. We already have enough land to grow the food, to feed all the humans, but we're using that land and we're using that food to feed the animals, to in turn feed us. So the animals are acting kind of like the middlemen. Cows and pigs actually need more food than we do, especially cows, because cows weigh like 10 times more than a human. So if we were to instead convert that land into land use for food for humans, we would have plenty of food. 70% of the grain grown in the US feeds livestock and globally 83% of the farmland is for raising animals, leaving only 17% of the farmland as land use for humans. It is estimated that over 70 million tons of food that could be consumed by humans goes to animal agriculture instead. But why is this better for the planet? Why did I even bring this up? I highly encourage you to watch Kiss the Ground. I've brought this up in so many videos over the past like two or three months, but this is a documentary about regenerative farming. Our current agriculture system is three main crops, soybeans, field corn, and wheat in the US. Can you guess where the majority of those three crops go? To cattle and other livestock. These crops are known as monocrops and lead to soil degradation and things like droughts and flooding. If we move away from monocultures, we can see less flooding and droughts in the future. Another reason that eating less meat is better for the environment is because eating less meat means less water consumption. Water is a valuable resource and I talked a lot about that in that video linked up here if you'd like to learn more about water usage and how we can reduce water usage. One of them is eating less meat. Not only do livestock drink an exceptional amount of water, but the water that it takes to grow their food is immense. Yes, we require water for our food too, but we require much less food than a cow, meaning a lot less water use. In fact, it only takes 100 to 200 times more water to raise a pound of beef than a pound of plant foods, meaning that if you just cut one kilogram of beef out of your diet, you can save up to 15,000 liters of water. Even replacing just one chicken in your diet saves 4,325 liters of water. Again, you make a huge difference just by cutting one kilogram of beef out of your diet, but imagine if you cut one kilogram of beef out of your diet every single day. That's a lot more water being saved. There's also a lot of issues with factory farming. I'm not even gonna touch on any of the ethical issues, but let's continue to talk about the environmental issues. So notice also how I said factory farming. I'm gonna talk about an unpopular vegan opinion here. I think there are better ways to consume animals 
for the environment. I'm not saying that it's ethical, but raising animals can be better for the environment, but factory farming is really, really the killer when it comes to the environment. So yes, even if you still eat meat that's locally grown on your own farm or in your own region, it still has a higher environmental footprint than eating a plant-based option. But if you avoid factory farming altogether and you stick to local sourced meats, that's a huge win too. I think that even if you still stick to local based meats, you should still cut back on your meat consumption. Eating meat every single meal every single day is a lot of meat. It's a lot of health implications with that too. And if you're interested in learning more about the health impact, I highly recommend the book called How Not to Die. <laughs> Very pleasant title, but it really does talk about the benefits of eating more plants and eating less meat. Not necessarily going vegan, but just how plants have such a great benefit to our health. I think this is a really important point to bring up because so many vegans I feel like out there are like, everyone needs to go vegan right now. That's so difficult. I think bringing up the option of eating locally sourced meats is a great option for for people who are transitioning to veganism or experimenting and don't want to quit cold turkey. So if you do want to still continue to eat meat in moderation, I highly encourage you to avoid buying meat that is like factory farmed and that you can get at like Walmart and Kroger and HEB, all those big stores, and try to shop at your local deli, from your local butcher, from your local farmer. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. <laughs> And I can definitely see some of these implications still remaining true with local farming as well, but they're definitely key with factory farming. Anyway, the first is excess fertilizer use from crops used for factory farming, and they can leach into groundwater, which can affect local food and water sources. Not to mention this can make its way all the way into the ocean and affect fish and wildlife. Plus all the animal waste can also end up in our groundwater. Another big issue when it comes to factory farming is soil degradation and Kiss the Ground did a really good job talking about this. And that is because when animals are wild on a pasture, they are free to roam. But when they're on a factory farm, they're enclosed in a very small space with a lot of animals packed in there, meaning that the limited grass that they do have, they stomp it down very quickly and they eat it very quickly. That pile of mud no longer sequesters carbon. It becomes very dry very quickly, leading to floods and droughts. Not to mention the monocrop issue that we mentioned earlier. Also, those monocrops required to feed the cattle and other livestock. That leads to more issues with soil degradation too. Experts estimate that we could run out of topsoil in just 60 years. That's just 60 more harvest if we keep farming as we have been since the Dust Bowl. So while we did learn a few things, a few lessons from the Dust Bowl, we didn't learn quite enough. If you'd like to have a video more about talking about regenerative farming, let me know down below. I'd love to talk about it. I come from a farming community, so farming actually really interests me. Let me know if you'd like to hear more about that. But if you would like a deep dive on Kiss the Ground, I will leave my friend Susie's deep dive. Her channel is Chew on that. I'll leave her video link down below. A really big issue with factory farming is deforestation. And surely you've heard of this before. Hopefully you have. I guess. From 2000 to 2010, industrial agriculture accounted for about 80% of tropical and subtropical deforestation. While palm oil is included in that number, the other two main contributors are soy harvesting and cattle ranching in places like Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And in 2020, we saw the harsh effects of deforestation from cattle ranching and from soy production with the Amazon forest fires. So by not eating meat or as much meat, you will help preserve habitats and species and therefore biodiversity. Again, if you're interested more in the biodiversity series, I've already made one video on it. I'll leave it linked up here and down below. The other two videos are coming, so stay tuned for that and subscribe so you don't miss them. Eating less meat also reduces energy consumption for a lot of different reasons. All across the board from things like operating planters and combines during multiple harvests because cows live a long time and require a lot of food, shipping the food, sometimes turning it into feed, Feed, keeping the lights and the fans on in the barn, medicating the animals, more shipping and producing of the medication, not to mention that meat requires refrigeration, which means more energy during the shipping and storage in the grocery stores and in your home and so forth. There is quite a lot of energy use when it comes all the way from planting to producing to slaughtering to producing again and then storing, more shipping, so much energy. And how much do you wanna bet that none of that energy is green energy? It's all probably coal and petroleum. Another big point I'd like to talk about is that plants are better for the air. So animals produce methane, every single animal, even you and me, it's just a natural occurrence. And once we produce our methane and carbon dioxide, that's what the plants are for. They actually sequester that carbon dioxide and methane and the cycle continues. But we have a lot of animals on the earth right now and we're cutting down trees at a rapid rate. 
and were kind of not in balance. Cows also produce some of the most methane of all creatures, resulting in about 37% of the world's methane emissions. Of course, this is from humans' activity and not by nature. A single cow produces 70 to 120 kilograms of methane, and there are about 1.5 billion cows in the world. But if we all quit eating cows, won't they overtake the world? No. If we just let the cows go and we let the cows roam, they'll eventually balance themselves out. And they will probably learn to live naturally again. Hopefully. I don't know. And it's also not going to be sudden. We're not just like, nobody's eating beef ever again. Let the cows go. No. It's going to be subtle, as it has been over the last 20 years. As veganism has gone up, the eating of beef has gone down. As we eat less beef, less cows are being bred. Eventually, we're going to get to very few cows on the earth. I hope you understand what I'm getting at. <laughs> when cows roam, they don't produce as much methane because they aren't completely destroying ecosystems like they are in factory farms, like I talked about earlier. Again, seriously, go watch Kiss the Ground. Put it on your need to watch list, go favorite it on Netflix right now. Even if cows are producing the same amount of methane when they're roaming, there's still grass out there to sequester the carbon. And if you didn't know, methane is roughly 23 times more potent than CO2, meaning it causes more damage to the environment. Not to mention, the more plants we plant, the more CO2 and methane that can be sequestered from the environment. So if we replaced that, I'll insert a big map right here of how much land is used in the United States by just livestock. It's a big, big, area and that's not just their food that's like livestock housing so if we replaced all of that livestock housing with farms with food for humans think about how much carbon we could sequester from the air so plants literally clean our air provide us the oxygen we need to live and we take that for granted <laughs> lastly let's talk about personal carbon footprint not something i love to talk about because it was actually invented to put the blame on the consumer. But anyway, eating less meat will lessen your personal carbon footprint because it is something we need to monitor because we shouldn't just be living frivolously having huge carbon footprints, but don't stress too much about your personal carbon footprint. That's what I'm getting at. Companies should be just as responsible as we are. But something you can easily do to cut your carbon footprint is to boycott factory farming. 51% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions come from animal agriculture, from feeding them to eating meat and even eating their byproducts. Sorry, vegetarians. It's true. Vegetarian, vegetarian is a good step on your way from omnivore to vegan, but eating completely plant-based is definitely the best when it comes to environmental footprint not saying like vegans are superior to anybody but the diet the, the plant-based diet best for the environment in my unprofessional opinion so many caveats <laughs> so meat eaters tend to have twice the carbon footprint of someone who eats plant-based especially if that meat eater is someone who eats a standard american diet which is meat for every single meal so in conclusion, I'm not asking anybody to go vegan. I'm just here to present the facts. Eating a plant-based diet is much better for the environment than eating a standard American diet. Like I said, even from the beginning, cutting out just one kilogram of beef a week, one kilogram of beef a month has a big impact. I encourage you to go beyond that. Make small changes. There are so many small, easy changes like getting dairy-free whipped cream, switching to dairy-free milk, dairy-free butter. Those are so easy because you can hardly taste the difference. I understand like switching meat and eggs it might be a little tricky at first just because especially if you've been a meat eater for 20 30 40 years it can be hard believe me I, I was there the more you go along the more swaps you make the easier it becomes and again I also encourage you to check out my first video I made for Veganuary this year where I talked about stereotypical vegan food you don't have to eat tofu and salad and smoothies all day long you can have fun eating vegan food you can still eat burgers you can still eat tacos you can still eat like sausage and pancakes and chili and tortilla soup like you can have so many fun things as a vegan the point is is i hope that now that you've learned all of these facts i hope that you at least consider swapping out a plant-based burger for your beef burger i hope that you consider having minestrone soup instead of chicken noodle soup for example these days there are so many helpful resources it's so easy to go vegan in 2021 than it was to go vegan say in the 90s for example because we have things like pinterest where you can just quickly search like vegan chili, vegan tacos, and you can get hundreds of recipes. You have so many resources on YouTube for recipes as well and for advice for new vegans. Now that, again, now that I'm trying to persuade anybody, I still encourage you to check out a video I made last year about 30 plus reasons to go vegan that don't include for the animals, though that is still a good reason. 
just because going vegan is great for your health as well. I also have a new great resource on my website that's got so many great resources when it comes to vegan documentaries, vegan books, vegan YouTubers, vegan bloggers. I will leave that linked down below. <laughs> I just wanna wrap up this video by saying that going vegan or even just a little more plant-based has such a positive impact on the planet. And I encourage you to check out more of my resources and learn more about plant-based eating and get more inspiration from some of my favorite YouTubers and bloggers. So I will leave some of them linked down below as well. Lastly, I apologize for Mochi's bell this entire time. She's been very loud. Thank you so much for watching and coming along and learning more about veganism and why it is so much better for the environment than the standard American diet. If you found any inspiration from this video, you found it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and shared this video with others. I would have loved to have this resource like two or three years ago when veganism was just lingering in the back of my mind and I was like, should I, should I not? This really would have helped me make the final decision and learn a lot more. As well as get more helpful recipes because I've linked some of my favorite YouTubers down below. But that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. I hope you stay tuned for the rest of Veganuary. I have a few more Veganuary videos planned and don't forget to stay tuned for that biodiversity series as well. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Part of it was just, um, what's the word? It's when you, it's when you don't, it's on the tip of my tongue. Ignorance. And can you guess where the majority of those three crops grows? Gross. <laughs> Kansas and Ohio and o Iowa. <laughs> Do you need love? Oh, goodbye. This is filthy. That made it very, very. <sighs> You're being such a baby. But eating completely pant-based. Pant